Wait, wild time. There it is. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are back. It is the Wild Times, episode number 80. That's a lot of episodes. It's a lot of yeah. weeks that we have done Many the weeks. Wild Times. There's lots going on. Uh, this is the greatest episode ever, I'm pretty sure. Haven't done it yet, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be the best one yet. Um, yeah. Episode number 80, it's a big number. We always said episode 80 was going to be the one, the cherry, the one that we show everybody. So let's not fuck exactly. it up. Exactly. Yeah. It's just big, big. I am your host, Forrest Galante, the broologist. Joining me tonight and always is Papa Pen Pick. Yeah, fucking it up already. Yep. <laughs> All right. Try that again. Papa Pen Clicker himself, Papa P, Patrick DeLuca, the producer. What's going on, Papa P? Hey, man. I'm uh, excited that we're back. Uh, I We have a real good top three DFL, a themed one coming mm -hmm. up, and I'm mm -hmm. like, Really searching my brain because I want to win this one. Who's is vacuuming? There, is Someone is vacuuming. <laughs> yeah, is it somebody coming after somebody with a chainsaw? What what the fuck is going on? <laughs> it's definitely at Patrick's house. So we got about an inch and a half of rain in LA, <laughs> and one of my pepper trees. I have two pepper trees in the backyard that grow these pink peppercorns. So about uh -huh. a thirty foot tree fell into the pool from <laughs> ah. two inches of rain. Okay, but here's the good news. I don't know how it's possible, but the roots are still intact. So. We have pinned the tree up and uh, tied it to the fence and saved it. That's great. Uh, and now they're running a vacuum for some say, reason. I was going to say, what's that do with the vacuum cleaner? Well, that's, uh, yeah. All right. By the way, those, be good. those good pod. Uh, Chilean peppers, I think they're called, those pink peppercorns, they're really good. Put them in a pepper grinder. Like, Dude, really they're good. delicious. If they're you, spicy. Oh, man. They're yeah. sweet. Yeah, yep. they're nice. But pop a couple up your urethra. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know. Come yeah. in with sure the urethra jokes. Listen, I still we're trying to fucking you. pitch this. This is the episode. People oh, that's need right. to see what the yep. real shit is. Yep, that's urethra. about urethra peppers. peppers. Um, and the guy with the big ideas over there, the PhD in podcasting, the professor, Mr. Ritep. How you doing, Ritep? Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, happy to be here today. I am doing great. My house is full of boxes because I'm moving. Yep. That is why I look like I'm in a box right now. And I hope that we don't have to listen to the Chainsaw Massacre going Speaking on. Speaking of background. having to listen to shit, I have listened to you bitch, moan, gripe, complain, rant, scream, and shout for 10 years straight about how much you despise the city of Los Angeles. You yep. will tell anyone who will listen how much you hate it. And yep. you have decided to purchase a home. Congratulations. <laughs> you get your keys today. It's not in Los Angeles, mate. Ventura County. Thank you. Is okay. Simi Valley in anyway. Ventura County? Yeah. It's okay. in Simi Valley. And then the other thing is, you know, you, you don't have a choice when you're in a monogamous relationship. <laughs> there it is. There it yeah. is. Very nice. No, I'm Good. stoked. Yeah. yeah, good. That's exciting for you. So I hear you have other big news. Somebody told me that you're just jacked and skinny. And you now, what's that all about? Definitely not jacked. Uh, <laughs> jacking off with peppers in my pee hole. But uh, <laughs> nope. Nope. sorry. So wait, what's I'm this about? Really, have you really been dieting? That. You've lost 15 yeah. pounds? What's that all about? Tell us the story. 17 uh, pounds. The type of guy who gets like semi, uh, I, I'm an addict. So I, I get addicted to certain behaviors and things. And my most recent one was, uh, I found this book. It's called How Not to Diet. And okay. uh Okay, so, it's sounds like a bad start for losing weight, but please continue. <laughs> right. No, either a bad start or a brilliant, brilliant guy who wrote it. No, so he's a doctor, right? And he wrote this book, and it's all science-based. And so everything is a study, all double-blind placebo studies on how you can lose weight, basically. Okay. And it's a thousand fucking pages. I haven't read the whole thing yet, but I've read a good chunk of it. But the guy donates all the money to fucking charities. Like, he doesn't take any of the profits from the speaking engagement. So I was like, okay, like, this sounds legit. So I check out this book. And essentially, uh, one of the main things I took from the book after reading many hundreds of pages is you need to eat. If you want to lose weight, you have to eat a shitload more fiber plant-based fiber and that's okay. it and it does it's not just because uh you know it, it's it's a whole array of it does a whole array of things dude it it, it, it makes you shit poo -poo. out yeah it yeah. helps you yeah. it makes so you, you shit you out shit more yourself fat. skinny that's the play well no see here's the thing 
Here's the thing. So, and, and, I, and I didn't believe this until I did it. Uh, you stop farting as much after eating a lot of beans for like a month. Your body gets used to it. I swear to God, you got to eat. I've been eating fucking basically uh, three and a half servings of beans a day, which is three and a half cups. And, you know, I've lost 17 pounds doing it what, over what like a beans month and a half. What are you eating? I feel like there's like two kinds black. of beans. There's like black no, beans and black yeah. and chickpeas. Chickpeas are be- even better for you because okay. they have uh, more protein in them. So can I mean. you just eat hummus or do you have to hummus, eat? Hummus, yeah. Okay. No, no, I mean, it's supposed to be, it, I'm fucking lazy. It's supposed to be a well-rounded <laughs> like thing. But, you know, I want to get the fucking beans in. So I eat a can of beans without warming them up out of the can. And I'm like, good, my beans are done for the day. You're I don't like have my to eat dog. Any. That's, how I, that's, that's yeah. how I feed my, my canine. Okay, well, yeah. well, that's good. Yeah. Good for you, and man. I, and I lost that's great. But, but so uh, if anybody wants to do this shit, and I'm not promoting it. You guys are the ones that are asking, and I've been obsessed with it for a month. There's a fucking <laughs> free app that's completely free that I've been using and sending Patrick screen grabs of my weight decline. Uh, it's called, <laughs> <laughs> it's just called the Daily Dozen, and you basically tick off all the things he talks about in the books, and you hit the little I, and it tells you, like, oh, it, it, if you eat this, there's a study that said, or they, they tested 30 women or whatever they ate cumin for lunch and dinner every day and they lost an cumin? average f- cumin yeah I four more said p- human no, human no. human <laughs> but anyways it explains every little thing it's a free right. app if you're looking to lose weight get the daily dozen app and send your screen grabs to pat via dm that's at the spiceman <laughs> on instagram so forrest okay, we well, talked about yeah we talked about during season one of extinct or alive we were just sending lists to each other I was mostly just using Wikipedia, yep. saying, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? Yep. One of the ones that we talked about was the La Palma giant lizard. La yes. Palma is an island yep. in the Atlantic. Canary uh, Islands, yeah. Canary Islands. We didn't end up doing it for, what was the reason why it wasn't I interesting I think Animal to Planet wasn't interested in lizards. They were like, okay. a, you know, it's like a 12 inch long lizard. They're like, no, nah, that's not for us. They're like, it's not, when you said giant, we thought it was 25 feet long. Correct. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but have you guys seen in the news, like La Palma is an active volcano. The whole island is, and it's horrifically erupted. Nope. Yeah. I have not seen that. Oh it's boy. It thing. is, it is a massive, I mean, like everything is like under like t- 20 feet of ash, dude. Yeah, huh. huge lava flows. Oh yeah, look at um, that! It's gnarly, really gnarly. And there's a ton of uh, there's a lot of stray dogs on the island for whatever reason. <laughs> people, people moved onto the island in, in the year 2000. No, oh, but on the edges, a lot of the dogs have made it out to the outskirts of the island, and they're separated out by these big lava flows, right? Hmm. So there's all these stray dogs that are alive, and they can see them from helicopters, and they are using drones to drop them food to keep them alive until they can be rescued. Oh, I thought that cool. was awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Don't let Mitch hear about this. He'll be on the next flight over there. <laughs> Anything to nerd out with it. <laughs> yeah. um, I just love that there was funding cool. for this. You yeah, know, like, that's amazing. That's for really sure. neat. Huh. That's cool. Yeah, I did. I, it's funny because when you said that, I did not know that that was La Palma Island, but I had seen some of the pictures and news stories floating around of the volcano and just sort of hadn't connected the mental dots. I, I just didn't realize that's where it was happening. So not looking good for our likely already extinct lizard either. I was going to say we could do a quick episode of the extinct or alive game. Uh, La Palma giant lizard. Extinct. <laughs> not uh, poor, good. Poor, yeah. poor bastard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, dude, very fun you know, we, we went to Fernandina, obviously we've talked about it at length. What an amazing place it was. It's basically just a little fucking protected paradise full of penguins, iguanas, Mm -hmm. uh, seals, seals, uh, one living Fernandina tortoise. (laughs) If if that thing blew like this, it would be devastating. Oh, yeah. I would would legitimately cry for like two days. Straight up. No, yeah, that's that's crazy. Well, that's really cool that they're using the drones to feed those dogs. Not good for the lizards or the inhabitants. Are they evacuating the island? Is it just part of the island? I, I haven't heard anything about it. Don't know if they evacuated in time. I did see a couple videos where people were standing on their roofs trying to basically digging down into the ash and like exposing the roof of their house. Jeez. Oh, my God. That's crazy. So, it's not you looking know, good. You know what? Uh, 
the problem with society today is I saw the headline of this on Reddit the other day in the conspiracy subreddit. It had like uh, several hundred upvotes and a bunch of comments and somebody, you know, it was like a conspiracy about the powers that be or trying to do this or that. I'm just like, what? Like what you as, think in, as a, in the powers that be made the like, volcano or like, like the elites. Yeah. Like and there and it's some agenda they have. And don't get me wrong. Like, here's the thing. When something happens, people capitalize on it. People exploit it the, and rich people do. But it's like they, they're, it's just such nonsense. And I, and I was like, all these people are like agreeing. And I'm like, are these people are they dumb or are they just angry? I don't really know at this point. Anything that goes out there, every headline ends up in conspiracy if it's big news. And they're just like, it's just full of like misinformation, crazy shit. And I'm just like, man, what happened to the good old fucking conspiracies that were about aliens and fucking <laughs> UFOs and shit, man? It's all like, it's all yeah, just crazy Yeah, the Illuminati shit, made the volcano go off. Forrest, For sure. did, you see, uh, <laughs> did you see anything in the news that caught your fancy? I got one more thing, but I'll let you go next. Uh, there's a couple kind of interesting things. I think my favorite slash arguably the worst slash I'm not actually against it thing was, did you see there was a headline in the Daily Mail, one of the greatest news publications of all time, <laughs> um, yep. uh, monkey business, Japanese bar where you are served by a waitress who is cute, furry, and paid in bananas. That's right. <laughs> that's, a that's restaurant some... in Japan has been using macaques as waiters for 30 years, I think, or 20, 29 years. Um, and they have these little macaques dressed up in, like, pretty adorable little skirts and shirts. And they're running around with bottles of sake and, uh, and <laughs> aca acai beer and dropping it off at your table. And it's freaking rad. <laughs> now, do you think they, uh, they hired the same macaque that stole your iPhone and tried to scam you out of all that money? This is a good question. And <laughs> I'm very impressed that you remember that and that it was a macaque. But um, no, that's not the same one. But it does further prove my point as to what these things are capable of, though. I mean, they are little kleptos. <laughs> Dude, did, yeah. you, did you see the video that was going around this week of the, I think it was called like a rough, a rough something dolphin, a, a rough toothed dolphin that bombed in on those scuba divers to protect them from the shark. I saw oh, the I heard headline. I did not look at it. Is it cool? The video is actually pretty cool because, you know, as the divers, they say basically like the shark just came in for a look like it didn't do anything menacing. But this dolphin just bombs in out of the deep blue water huh. and it starts like literally like hurting the shark. It's like swimming circles around it and it's like clearly protecting the people, I would say. It really wow. looks. It really looks like the dolphin is looking out for them. Oh, and it's an There's oceanic white tip, which are pretty menacing sharks too. Hell yeah! They're notoriously toothy. By the way, I'm very surprised you didn't comment toothy. on monkey waiters there, Patrick. But um, <laughs> I'm watching this this video. Uh, yeah, no, that dolphin's definitely pushing that shark off. They're amazing. Dolphins are so cool. But why would the dolphin do this? Like what? Is it just like uh, the, those are mammals? I need to look out for mammals. Yeah, I mean, it's not the first time in history that we've heard about this. Like this is this is sort of a known behavior that we've seen a bunch of different times. Dolphins, uh, whales, even orcas coming in and protecting protecting being the key word divers from sharks. There's like a lot of uh, swimmers, all kinds of things. There's a lot of stories of this happening, and they've always just sort of been tall tales. But here is an actual you know, video recording of a dolphin coming in and sort of swimming circles around these people to keep the shark away. I, I think that dolphins sort of look at us people as as kind of friends. And I know that sounds ridiculous. And, you know, they they look out for people. I, it's, it, I don't know how else to put it. They've just been known to do this a couple different times. See By the way, it, right? the body language of yeah. that shark is not overly aggressive. You know, it doesn't right. have an arch back or lock pectoral fins. Like, it's sort of just cruising in to check them out. My guess is these divers are probably checking out the... They're probably there to dive with the shark to begin with. Um, hard to say, but no, totally looks like this dolphin is sort of having a freak out and being like, get away, get away, get away. <laughs> right. Um, right, it's panicking. Yeah. Which is pretty, I mean, it's a, it's amazing. Like I said, there are all these, like, legends and rumors of marine mammals doing this to protect people. There's even one of a, of a dolphin pushing a guy to shore when there was a great white shark around. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Here's video evidence of it. Pretty cool. Very cool. So the oceanic white tips, 
They they tend to swim in pretty big schools sometimes, right? They can do. I mean, they're a solitary shark, but they feed off of cues of each other. So when there's a shipwreck, when there's a, a dying whale, whatever it is, they all sort of converge because they're out kind of drifting in ones or twos out in the open water. And then as soon as they hear or smell something, they sort of get pulled in from every direction to whatever that thing happens to be. So like, I mean, wow. we've never really talked about it on the show, the USS Indianapolis. They, they yeah, no, I don't uh, think it's we typically have. thought that it was a bunch of oceanic white tips that ate possibly hundreds of U.S. Navy seamen. Three, <laughs> you just wanted to say seamen. Uh, <laughs> three, yeah. 300 of them, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so USS Indianapolis. Actually, this is a fun topic. Should we get on a little bit of a wormhole here? Yeah. Oh, we absolutely should. I mean, it's, it's literally one of the most interesting things that's ever happened. It's so for those that don't know, the USS Indianapolis, and I'm going to turn this over to Patrick because he's got some really in-depth and interesting sort of backstory on the sinking of the ship. And uh, remember, Patrick, when we were researching it for that yeah. show, the History Channel yep. show? And I'll, I'll turn that over to Patrick because he's got some interesting sort of more historical data. But the data that I remember, um, or rather the information was, so USS Indianapolis set out and was bombed and went down, right? And I'll let Patrick explain that and the motives behind it, and there's some interesting stuff there. But what was so interesting is that the what occurred after the bombing, only maybe a couple people were hurt, if any, on the ship actually being struck. What occurred after that was the second largest human mass murder by wildlife in history, and 300 soldiers that had basically hit the water and were just kind of treading water, waiting for life rafts and whatnot, were, were allegedly attacked and killed in a frenzy by sharks. And without any Damn. doubt in the location that it happened, these were oceanic white tips. Now this was, I don't remember the year, but long enough ago that it was before the 93% decline in shark populations that we've had worldwide. Right. So there would have been a hell of a lot of oceanic white tips. And oceanic white oh. tips, for anybody that's ever been in the water with them, they're very erratic, they're very aggressive, and more than anything, as I explained, they're solitary. So when they come together, they feel competition with each other. So what happened was, the ship went down. There was all this noise, this explosion, this chaos in the water. Sharks started to show up, and more and more sharks started to show up, and people started panicking. And as the people started panicking, the sharks got excited. As the sharks got excited, they started competing with each other to be like, oh, you're going to bite that guy's leg? I'm going to bite his groin and his leg, you know? And oh. like just started freaking out and revving each other up to the point that, according to old tales, the ocean turned red with blood as 300 people in an overnight span were attacked and killed and bled and eaten to death by this frenzy of oceanic white tips, which is unbelievable Fuck. because, you know, I, I know that people have tried to simulate this to see this happen again by, like, making noises in the ocean and putting blood in the ocean and been unable to have this happen a second time in that manner. So, you know, it's something where only real organic, like, fear and chaos can lead to such a crazy animal Just encounter. Fuck yeah, nuts. I mean, it, it was torpedoed, right? So you've already got this big explosion. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the boat going down. People are thrashing around. Hundred, I, I think like 900 people or something like that went into the water. Right. And so you've got all this thrashing. Then a couple bites happen. And then you're saying just from there, it's just every... Mass escalation. Every white tip shark in the area comes bombing in. Yeah. And Could just goes you bonk. imagine? And, and by the way, these sharks, Ugh. sorry, Ritev, I do want to no. hear your reaction, but these sharks are notorious for actually following large ships because they, they kind of eat more or less anything. So these, shar these sharks would follow these ships to begin with and wait for sailors to dump their garbage and stuff overboard. And then, in addition to that, they're known to be attracted by sound. So this big explosion was like ringing a dinner bell throughout the <laughs> South Pacific. It was literally calling in because, you know, sound travels. What is it? 15 times faster underwater or something like that. I mean, it might even be more than that. Maybe. Um, yeah. Way faster underwater. So it's like this, this explosion was probably heard for like 150 miles. And every shark, every oceanic white tip that heard it was like, oh, that's where dinner's coming from. And just turned and headed towards it. And it just got chaos. Bro, the... The the terror and the horror, yeah. if you were in the fucking water, I mean, it's unimaginable how right? how terrible that would be. Like, that's like you're in fucking just a war. You're like you're on the battlefield, but but worse. You're just watching everybody helplessly getting 
Like that shit terrifies me, man. I, I'm not oh, happy. Yeah, God, dark yeah. outside. Oh, oh, and it dude. was night. Yeah, it was pitch black yeah. when you yeah. got your life vest on. I mean, these guys had Whoa. been through a ton already, right? So this yeah. ship, the USS Indianapolis, oh, was God. like the pride and joy of Franklin Franklin D. Roosevelt, who was the president. He had used it to. He had taken trips to Europe in it. He loved the ship. He'd, he'd been on three long trips in it. The ship's at Pearl Harbor in December of '41, and a day before the attack on Pearl Harbor, everyone's out on shore leave. Captain gets a, a call or a message or whatever, and he's like, they're like, get, just go, go. And he's like, I got three quarters of my fucking crew is on shore leave. They're like, go now. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Then the Pearl Harbor attack happens. The, the, Ruse, the Indianapolis was spared. Four years later, they pick up this mysterious payload and these mysterious guys, and they know they're being lied to. They're not let off the ship. And it turns out that those were the bombs that, that the U.S. dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So they, they basically went, delivered those bombs, I think, in Guam. I'm pretty sure. I might be wrong about that. Delivered this mysterious payload. Um, and they weren't let off the ship there, which was very unusual. And then they're basically said, just go on this. They're told, go on this heading. And they're sent in the heading of a place where three uh, Japanese subs had just blown up another ship a couple days before. They were never told. They weren't given that intel. So they're just cruising through the South Pacific on a random mission that they don't even actually know wh what exactly they're going to do next. And they get hit by one of these subs that had just blown up another ship. No one was told. They go down in the water. You hit the water. You've been through all this shit. Probably a bunch of your buddies died at Pearl Harbor. You know, you've mm -hmm. been through all this stuff and you go, well, at least the water's warm. Christ, <laughs> <laughs> dude. But and then to the next through, thing you know. But yeah. to read through the lines of Patrick's story, Ratep, and you'll like this as, the, as our resident conspiracy weirdo. Oh, yeah. There I've is been something, yeah, you're following, but just to make it clear, there is something definitely amiss. Because, right. like Patrick said, the ship was sent away from Pearl Harbor before Pearl Harbor happened. It was They were told not to unload when they got to Guam or wherever it was. Uh, you know, they got sent on this course heading that they didn't know why. The, the fact, the information that uh, the Japanese subs were there was deliberately left out. Like, and this is all, like, very well documented. Patrick and I did a show on this for the History Channel called Face the Beast. And this was one of the episodes that we looked into. And we did a lot of research on it. And it was... Uh, it's very well documented. Like, this isn't like a wild conspiracy yeah. theory. It's like, why right. does yeah. so many pieces of this puzzle not add up? Like, why are, why were all the, why did all these things happen in this particular order? It's very strange. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. When, it's when it's factual and it's, it's logged in history and written down and you can follow the thread, you know, that's, that's more than, than this wild conspiracy theory, especially when it's something like that, dude. I mean, ugh, and then the end result. Do you think that... Well, that the real question is, was it sharks or was it, you know, robot soldiers under the robot water soldiers. there? Ripping <laughs> robot people right. dude. Ripping well, of course. <laughs> but I mean, you know, we were so, we were, you know, we were so concerned. The U.S. was so concerned about Russia stealing our nuclear secrets that it's, you know, it was very easy for them to go, well, how do we get rid of these 900 fucking guys? <laughs> Send right. them in, in the path of these, those fucking ah. torpedo subs. So they Jesus. get hit, and and then ultimately their their captain gets court martialed and spends a bunch of time in prison. Oh, the captain they said, survived. The captain survived. They said he wasn't doing the proper zigzag pattern that he was instructed to do, even though years after he spent years in prison, he was retried, and it came out that he had done everything he was asked to do. Like he just they needed to blame someone, so they blamed him. Wow, right? It's it's a really fascinating chapter of the dark history of the U.S. when it pertains to getting in and out of wars. World yeah, War man, II, that yeah. is fucking crazy. I feel yeah. like I just watched a history show special. <laughs> right? I know. And we never got to make that episode. And we did a lot of work on it, too. And it was really cool. And, and the reason was dumb. Remember, they were like, this one's too good. <laughs> so let's not do it for the extended pilot. Let's do another exactly. shipwreck, and then we'll right. do this like as a two-hour special, and then it never made it to series. It just they just aired the two episodes on like a Saturday morning. Oh, they, they <laughs> oh, God. buried us. It was brutal. Yeah, um, yeah. the joy of being a TV 
producer. Oh yeah, you put in. But at least we make of millions of dollars. That's right. Yeah, we're so rich out of really? it. Really? So let me no. in. Um, <laughs> Not really. Nice. Um, All right. So here, so yeah, Forrest, actually, cool. let me yeah. throw this at you. You're there, right? Yeah. Uh, let's let's say me, you, and Ratep are we we are we've been hired to entertain the troops uh, okay. doing some live <laughs> podcasts. We're on the USS Indianapolis. It gets torpedoed. We go down. The water is a balmy 75. Mm -hmm. We feel good. We've got our life jackets on. You wouldn't need it. Ratep and I would. I would need it. I would panic immediately I'd and drown. I'd have three on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we're there. Night has set in. And from the screams around us, it's pretty clear that the sharks are there and they're frenzying. How do you, what do you do to try and keep yourself alive in that case? It's dark. Do you, you don't have a mask Ratep? and snorkel. Yeah. Yeah. You have to stay as calm and as still as you can because what's invoking the attacks is people panicking and splashing and screaming and everything else. And, and you know when there's 200, 300 bodies, or let's say there's only 100 bodies at this point in time, the sharks aren't killing to eat at that point. There's plenty of food for them. They're killing out of that, that thing that I've talked about before a few times, that sort of hen house syndrome, where they're, all, they're overwhelmed by the abundance of prey and instinct is kicking in much more so than hunger. So if you just float there and just stay perfectly still, like a basically like a dead body, they're not gonna they're gonna leave you alone. You're not bleeding, you're not panicking, you're not thrashing in the water, you're not invoking any kind of instinctual response for them to prey on you. You're just floating there like another body or another inanimate object. In that situation, they're they're not gonna bug you at all. Would you maybe try to get a, because I'm sure the instinct there is like, let, I'm scared, I'm terrified, let's all huddle up, let's get close to each other. Would you try and get away from the group? Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, that's, that's a tough call because away, there's safety in numbers, right? But it's like when, like when I was a lifeguard, they're always like, you know, save yourself first, never get with the, the group because they'll drown you, right? So if you're in right. a group and they start, somebody in your group starts thrashing or panicking, everybody's fucked because they're pushing people and they're thrashing. So I don't think I'd want to be part of the huddle, even though there is safety in numbers. I think you're better to gently drift away from everything and look for anything that you can climb out on, get a, you know, a life raft, a door, anything. But I think the idea of getting into a huddle and a group is great if you're in the middle and everybody can like sit like a mat dead still, but you can't, I personally couldn't trust human beings to stay calm in that situation. You know what I mean? You know if somebody's no going to freak out. Yeah, exactly. And it just takes one person freaking out and thrashing, and that person gets bitten, and then the person next to them gets bumped, and they freak out and thrash. If you could calm your nerve, and literally, even when a shark's rubbing against your leg or whatever, just stay dead still and calm, I think you'd be absolutely fine in that situation. I wonder how the captain got out. Well, he didn't go down uh, with the ship, obviously. <laughs> Right. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a strange thing too. But I was reading about that just the other day, the captain going down with the ship and how, you know, like how it how it was historically it, it always was, was real. It was like this thing about being mm -hmm. the fucking captain of the men. And it's still to this day, they still it's still like required basically. You can get in trouble if you're not the yeah. last one off the ship. Do you remember that cruise ship that ran aground in Italy? Um, yeah. And they yeah. like, they literally, the captain was the first one off the ship. And he, yeah. I think he spent time in jail because he was basically. Well, so, oh, yeah, I think you ahead. might be thinking, so these happened at the same time. It okay. was the ferry boat that was ferrying a bunch of students in South Korea. It happened right at the same time that that Italian cruise ship ran up. Okay, ran I around. might be mixing them up. And most of the students went down with the ship and hundreds and hundreds died. And the captain was like the first, like literally first lifeboat. Yeah. And he went like, to I'm prison. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the, I, I think uh, it's something that you like sort of it's like an honorable thing that you sign that if you're the captain, you know, those lives are your responsibility. So you're the last one off the boat. Yeah, yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure you have to like you, you have to be the last one off. I like that. I like that. I, uh, a I did a thing. show called uh, <laughs> The Atlas of Cursed Places. It was actually a good show. We did uh, like six episodes on National Geographic last year. And one of the. Uh, one of the things we did was this episode in Romania, and we took this ferry. There was a terrible ferry accident um, just crossing from Romania to Bulgaria across oh, the yeah. river. I remember you telling me this. 
And we met with this guy, Theodore, who had survived this accident where I think the 245 people basically went down. They basically got T-boned by a barge, right? And the barge just slowly turned the ship like this. And then it kind of went over. Wow. And he said he, he saw it coming. He said he saw the T-bone coming and he was just watching it. And he said he basically just put his hands on the rail and just kept climbing as the ship was rotating 90 degrees onto its side. And he said, well, it was there on its side. He just walked along the top and jumped onto the barge. And he's wow. like, my, sh my shoes never got wet. <laughs> <laughs> and then the host, Sam, goes, were you scared? And he was like, no. He, no. Just, he, he just saw it happening and knew what to do. Right. And it was just such a, I was like, what the fuck? And then uh, very calmly, Sam's like, was anyone you knew on board? And he's like, yeah, my two sisters, they died. Oh, my Jeez. God. I was like, uh, fuck. But yeah, so the Indianapolis, to make to put a button <laughs> on the story, uh, 300 guys went down with the ship. 845 made it into the water. And of that, less than 350 lived, to tell the story. So Still at some point, 450 guys died. How many were sharks? We, we don't know, but a lot. Yeah. <sighs> to Pretty live crazy. through that, too, would be fucking nuts, man. Jeez. Yeah. Jeez. Rather, rather live through it than not, though. Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know what I don't want to live through is, have you guys seen these fucking robots that, that, the, that they're uh, creating, these robot dogs that they've now put guns on top of? Have you seen this what? headline? Yes. Are these yeah, the yellow terrifying. ones? The, like, the, what's that company that's making them? I think yeah, seen... yeah. Uh, okay. Boston Robotics. Yes, Boston Robotics. Yeah. Yeah, so they've been, they've been fucking making these, these dogs that, that are robots for a while now. They, they, you see them, they're dancing, like it's all cute, it's funny. The other week, come out fucking with a video of one of these things with a, with a gun on it, dude. I'm just like, <laughs> what? So now all of a sudden it's like cute, kitschy, funny TikTok material. And now I'm just like, okay, so these are going to be policing us? Like, yep. I, what no else question. are I going to use these for? It's coming. Fucking, dude, you can't do anything with these things. You can kick them over, they get right back up. They're, they're like an advanced version of those fucking clowns you punch that just keep coming back up. <laughs> the rolly clowns? Yeah. yeah. It's coming, man. It's all, all of that shit is coming. It's like fucking George Orwell is coming to life, you know? We're all going to be policed by robots and cameras everywhere. And, and the thing is, like, I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, you know, by the future and sci-fi. You have to. There's 8 billion people on this planet. There's going to be 10 billion people on this planet inside of five years. You have to do those things to manage that many people. Like, if, the, if there was 3 million people on the planet, sure, everybody can run <laughs> free million. and who gives a shit. You know what I mean? Like, I'd have, like, you, two acres to myself. It'd be great. You'd have a lot more than <laughs> two <laughs> acres if there are 3 yeah. million. You could have half of that lady yourself if there are 2 million people on the planet. But, like, when there's, when there's 10 billion people on the planet, you have to do all those things to police everybody. I mean, it's just, like, how else do you keep everything in line? It's Think crazy. about how terrifying it's going to be, though, the first time there's, like, a little knock at the door and it's, like, a police dog robot. And it's right. like, let me see your papers. <laughs> Dude, like, this is papers. not happening. I, I'm not it accepting this. It is 100% happening. It is happening in, I'm going to say, in our grandkids' lifetime. Like, right, before that, we die, we will see police robots. Okay. That, I mean, yeah. that's fine. As long as it's near, near the end of my life, I'll be okay with it. Because well, everybody will have acclimated by then, except for us old fucks. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about back when we used to walk places and police were... Humans. Walk places. Human like, beings. You, you remember when we had iPhones? Now it's fucking in chips in their heads. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> All those. Uh, simp, simp Anzi, simp underscore Anzi is an Instagram bro, okay. sent us a message. I, I'm sorry to do this, Ratep. You have to pull up this video. Okay, let's see. I'm going to wait for the video, but before, it is. Before, uh, before we dig talking. into that, and, and I might be opening up something I don't want to know about here. Simp is a thing. S I M P. That's a thing. Right. Do you guys yes. know what it Simp. is? It I don't know what it like, is. Like a it simpleton. Means, yeah, like a simpleton. Oh, I thought it was like some sort of perverted thing. No, it's like a thing people say, like, ah, oh, he's a simp. And it's just like a simpleton, like they're oh, dumb. Oh, that's not that bad. Okay, well, I'm a simp for not get it, figuring, figuring that out. So, yeah, that is uh, not a good looking shark. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, tell us what we're seeing here, Forrest. Yeah, so that's a sand tiger shark, clearly in an aquarium, and it has a very deformed spine. Um, you know, and uh, this is not 
super uncommon in the fish world, actually. You get uh, fish and sharks that look like this. I, I had a guppy that looked like that for a couple years. The thing is, in nature, that guy wouldn't have made it more than a few weeks, right? He would have just, right. he just would have been killed. But it was probably bred in the aquarium or captured when it was very little, and it gets fed plenty, and it lives in a fish tank, so its life's incredibly easy. But yeah, that is a, that is a sand tiger shark with a very deformed spine. Wow, looks crazy. You know, I've got scoliosis, but I don't look like that. Well, you also don't have bones made of cartilage. So sharks are purely <laughs> cartilaginous, right? How so, do you know? That's true. I don't. Um, <laughs> Sorry, but go on. Sharks, are, sharks and rays, uh, chimeras, are cartilaginous. So they don't have bones in their body the way we do. They have all cartilage. Like, imagine if your earlobe made up your entire body. Um, That'd be sweet. And so, I'd be able to fit under a door crack. Uh, no, but um, <laughs> it, uh, it, so it is furious, actually... My joke. It's, it's easier for cartilaginous creatures like that to end up sort of deformed like that because there's no hard bone and rigid stuff that sort of has to lock into place, if that makes mm. sense. So when you, when you have um, yeah, cartilaginous fishes like sharks and rays, you get a lot of deformities. And I actually posted something on my Instagram, I don't know, maybe a year ago now, of a deformed bat ray that had two sets of wings. And it's sort of the same thing. It was just an animal that was born, uh, you know, maybe in the womb it was held, it was positioned weird or in its egg casing or who knows. But, yeah, they just sort of come out squished up like that. Fucking weird. Yeah. Do you guys ever see that guy? There's, there was a guy who, uh, who was born with a defect where he was bent over and literally, uh, I can't remember, it might have been backwards, and he, his whole, his head was down by his hips and he had to fucking Ooh. live his life that way. And like no. middle aged, he finally got surgery and got it corrected. But dude, you're going like 30 years like that, man. Could you imagine how there, like bro, mentally so my, taxing that my would be? My wife watches those kind of shows like the. On, on TLC. Yeah. You know what I'm talking <laughs> yeah. about. The like, oh, yeah. you know, fucking pimple face show oh, and whatever. God, yeah, my, yeah, my, she doesn't watch that one, but she watches those kind of shows like the plastic surgery shows. And it's yeah. always someone who's just suffered or lived with it for like 25 years. And they, they drive there in a car, right? The surgery costs eight grand, but they drove there in a $35,000 car. And it's like. Wait a minute. Like, I'm sympathetic to the fact that, like, what you have sucks. Like, I get that, and I'm not arguing that for a second. But why did you wait this long to fix it? Uh, that I never under Like, and that's what I'm saying. It's not that you couldn't afford it, because you drove here in a car. Like, you live in a house. You know, the surgery costs eight grand, 12 grand, whatever. Like, why did you wait till you were middle aged to do this? Like, why not? alleviate and make half of your life better by fixing this thing. I've never, I've never understood that when I watch these shows. Well, I mean, cause they knew they were going to get on TV eventually, of course. Worth it. Yeah. If you have a, if you have a deformity, like there is a TL, there is a producer who will pitch a show with you to TLC and probably no sell question. it. No it question. It doesn't yeah. even need to be a deformity. You could have a mental handy. It doesn't matter what it is. You, you have, you have, you have obese Bad feet. people. Bad feet. Have, There's a show called my feet are killing me. Oh my God. And it's God. just like people with toenails. It's and it's like, unwatchable. Like, I haven't actually seen it, but I imagine it's just people with bad toenails. Well, I mean, think um, about the, <laughs> the stuff that we've done, expeditions to very hard to get to places, nearly die trying to get there. Mm -hmm. Exponentially more people watch a doctor scrub bunions off of people with bad feet. <laughs> no Because question. those shows get good ratings. I know. Of course they and do. I think about this all the time, and I'm like, what the fuck did I, am I, like, what is going on in the world? Like, you just summed it up perfectly. Why are millions of people tuning in to watch a bunion get scrubbed off a foot or a pimple get popped? I mean, pimple popper's huge. That's a huge thing. It's a huge show. Yep. Meanwhile, we're discovering extinct animals. Like, I've got dysentery. Like, you know, we're doing all this <laughs> shit that's, like, super important and helpful and good for the world. Nobody watches it. Like, six people nope. tune in. Nope. Yeah. Nobody cares. Yeah. yeah. It's wild. Well, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is that makes you want to watch the gross stuff for, you know, my 600 pound life. You know, you're just kind of watching people who are struggling with their health because they weigh 600 pounds. Like what I understand if you want to watch like the Kardashians or the Real Housewives, because it's just like I need a mind change. I'm going to not think about anything serious. Right. I also think I also think to interject for one second, people love to watch people that are more successful than them struggle. 
Like, I think that's why the Kardashians is so big, because it's like, oh, they have billions of dollars, but they have real problems, too. They're fighting with each other. They're fighting with their spouses. People want to see people have problems. Like, I kind of get that one, but the other, the gross shit, I don't get. I think... I think it's nope. like, you know, kind of that train wreck mentality when you're when because because I've watched uh, my 600 pound life or whatever before. And, you know, it's like I I could be there. I, I, I'm curious <laughs> as to how they got there so I can avoid. Not if you so keep eating beans, dude. You keep eating those beans and uh, you're not getting you're going to have like my 135 pound life. <laughs> yeah, I know. Dude, my um, my healthy BMI range, my weight would be I forget exactly. It's it's absurd though. It's like one, it's like one thirty five to one, like it's sixty five. I'm just like if I was yeah. if I was this weight, I would literally look like I I didn't eat like I was malnourished. Dude, so BMI was, is the yeah. biggest fraud. It's <laughs> ridiculous. So I have a brother who's super into running marathons. My brother mm-hmm. Dominic, right? He were the same height. I weigh 185. Like when I had the dad bod when I did the spin kick, I was probably like 191. <laughs> but like a good weight for me with, you know, I like to lift weights, you know, impeccable. Yeah, 180 to 185. My brother Dominic weighs like 150. I genuinely am not 100% sure that he could like defend himself from like a toddler <laughs> attack. You know, he's, he's very skinny because he's, he's a marathon runner, yeah, right? Yeah. It, according to BMI, I'm fucking obese. Yeah, right. We have the same right. body fat percentage. Yep. I just have 35 pounds of muscle that he doesn't have. Yep. And I'm considered an unhealthy weight, yep. whereas he's like right in the ideal range. I'm like, yeah. I just this is a silly thing. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. It is so stupid. I I was I was reading again back to my uh, How Not to Die book. <laughs> they say a more accurate way is to make sure to, to make sure you're healthy. And this is, you know, it's not to not be fat. It's to make sure you don't die from fucking, from the diseases that come along with being an an unhealthy piece of shit. Right. Basically, instead of BMI, uh, your your height should be half the size, or your waist should be half, under half the size of your height in inches. And you're like at a good, you're you're good. Because it's your waist. It's that fat there that fucks you up. But dude, the, yeah, but that's I'm different obese. for different b- body types as well. Like some sure. people have a fat middle and no other fat on them. Some people have fat thighs and a fat butt and no other fat on them. So that's no, but 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 it's but it's but in oh you're in, saying because the belly fat is like it's, bad. It's the worst kind particular. of fat. Yeah, that yeah, fucks I got you you. Up that makes and sense. gives you diseases and shit. There, there's but, a thing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Peter. Well, I was gonna say the fucking. Uh, the I, I'm I'm able to get my COVID booster because I am clinically obese. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, oh, I don't even awesome. have to lie. Like I'm, Peter, yeah, I'm obese. If you can just pull up a picture of a guy named DK Metcalf without his shirt on. DK Metcalf shirtless. So he's a wide receiver, plays for the Seahawks. He's a physical freak of nature. Okay. And when the draft, he's he's in his third year now. When it, the draft was coming around, this picture went around of him without his shirt on. He's just a is he the guy that looked like the fucking Ninja Turtle where his abs were sticking out from underneath yeah, his yeah, pads? Yeah, 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 I remember yeah. him, yeah. He's, you, he's the fastest player in the NFL. He is just a monster, right? Yeah. This guy has no body fat. You can no. see him there. He technically is obese. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's an That's obese ridiculous. man. He's yeah. unhealthy. He's, very, he's wildly yep. obese. And there's he needs a, there's to get his machine. COVID booster. <laughs> <laughs> There's a machine called an InBody. Have you guys seen this? They have one at my gym because my gym's like a fancy athletic performance type gym. And uh-uh. it does, th- those things are great because it breaks down like your muscle mass, you know, your muscle density, your water intake, your fat, your, your body fat, you know, it does like everything. And then it gives you a real readout and it tells you like, oh, you're not obese because you weigh X for X height. You just have, you know, you're, like for me, I can't remember what my muscle mass was the last time I did it, but it's like I'm like 78 percent muscle. Do you know what I mean? So it's like it's yeah. like that's why you weigh that much. Where and, you know, and meanwhile, my body fat's at like 14 percent or 15 percent, whatever it is, versus someone who's my same height and weight could have 23 percent muscle mass and just be a fat blob, you know, but weigh exactly the same as what I do at my height. And that's right. that's the problem is when you just take those basic numbers you just can't tell anything. It doesn't mean anything. 
It's like it's like the food pyramid scam, dude. Like, I was just shit? gonna say that. Just <laughs> gonna say it. It's crazy that that was accepted for so long. So we should be eating eight servings of white bread and pasta every day. <laughs> eight Wait, to so eleven. Is the food pyramid not a thing anymore? I remember the food pyramid. I thought that was still not that I've ever looked at it. But. They've changed it drastically, right? Okay. So the one that we learned was the bottom of the food pyramid was. Basically, white bread and pasta. It said you you needed eight to eleven fist-sized servings of <laughs> carbohydrates per day. Perfect. That's no longer the food pyramid. Go figure. I don't think. Although yeah, I every think food pyramid I'm seeing here is still showing that you need the most carbs on the bottom. Interesting. Which bread. is absolutely absurd. Okay, this is here's the original at USDA guide: bread, cereal, rice, and pasta. You want six to eleven servings of a day. <laughs> That's Christ. insane. Two to four servings of fruit, three to five servings of vegetable, two to three servings of milk, yogurt, and cheese, two to three servings <laughs> of meat, poultry, fish, eggs, beans, and nuts, and then sparing use of fats and oils. If, it's, if I ate that much, like I would that. pop. Yeah. yeah, you would Dude. be absolutely clinically obese. It's crazy <laughs> with, with the, uh, I mean, you know, it's all, it just goes to show you how much of an agenda there is in just everything. That's because they were trying to fucking sell certain things and deals were cut with certain uh, industries of food that were being subsidized by the government for this reason or that reason. Like, that's legit. That's not a fucking conspiracy theory, dude. There's lobbying going on that says, okay, let's uh, make this front company. I'm watching this documentary about, uh, have you guys seen Dope Sick? It's on Hulu. Mm-mm. Dude, no. it's so good. Michael Keaton. Anyways, it's all about the fucking Oxycontin bullshit. It's the same shit, dude. They form, they form like uh, seemingly uh, autonomous uh, like organizations that are pushing like in that case pain management and like 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 doing this whole thing. It's the same thing that they did with the food pyramid. It's like the USDA or whatever has its stamp of approval on this. What? Because, like, they're not fucking in anybody's pocket? Like, what are you hmm. talking about? You know, no, of course, of course they are. They're because every, it's every, ridiculous. Every single organization and person is in the pocket of somebody else's. They have to be. It's the only way the world works. Yeah, you man. You I mean, not sh- have an agenda. You have to. That Sugar doesn't mean there aren't honest people or honest companies, but every single organization and person on Earth has an agenda. You can't, nobody is truly you know, apolitical, a, a anything like everybody's well, got an agreed. opinion or, or an agenda. Yeah. Well, uh, I just want to, Forrest was really excited before this podcast. Do we have a jingle for uh, the segment that he wants to do that we haven't done in a long time? Oh, there we go. Uh, At first glance, it might be mistaken for a lemur. Activate creature uh, report. What in cousin fucking tarnation? I do think there's a squatch <laughs> in these woods. With its sharp claws. This is a long so one. Long. <laughs> Bizarre animal of the week. Yeah. Wow. That was uh. <laughs> I haven't heard. I don't think I've ever heard that jingle before. Me either. It's um, a good one. That's rad. Okay. Bizarre animal of the week. It was of the week until like, I don't know, April of last year. <laughs> but uh, we're bringing it back. It's time to do it again. Are you guys okay. ready for some clues? I'm ready. Oh, I'm ready, baby. Excellent. Okay. So, our bizarre animal of the week is found in the floodplains in tropical climates. Okay? Okay. okay. All right. Okay. A lot of creatures plains. in the floodplains of tropical climates. But yep. Yep. these animals live in underground nests, generally less than 100 altogether. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm thinking okay. some sort of rodent. They, uh, yeah, rodent. I'm in the rodent okay. family Peter? right now. Peter, you got anything yet? Narrowing it down? Yeah, I mean, uh, a hun- hundred is a lot. I mean, it would be rodents. It's either a rodent or an insect. Okay, very good. These creatures, these bizarre animals that live in floodplains and live in small groups of less than a hundred underground, use sticks and twigs to seal off the nest at night and reopen it in the morning when they go out to hunt. Some sort of mole. Nah. No. This is an insect because you said twigs. Okay. And uh, moles aren't using twigs. Why would you say twigs? <laughs> I don't know. They're very um, small. Sure, these sure, animals sure. forage for their food and are also known. Look at how ready. angry Pat is. I don't know why. Because I think known. you read it, you son of a bitch. I didn't. I'm not even in the dock. 
Okay. They are Sorry known to jump and catch prey out of the air. Hmm. Hmm. That has me so, off rodent. Jump and yeah. catch prey. So that has so me far, on rodent. <laughs> so far, our bizarre animal of the week lives in floodplains and tropical climates. Lives underground in groups of a hundred or less. They use sticks and twigs to seal off their opening to their burrow during the day and night, and they jump into the air to catch their prey. They can jump up to four times their height and take down prey that is twice their size. Okay, I'm back okay, so I'm, I, I'm on arachnid now because I'm thinking okay. trap. Right, we know the trap door spider will you will build little doors. So I'm very thinking good. arachnid. Yep. Very good. Very good. Anything else? All right. So yeah, oh, plenty more baby birds. <laughs> um, these Feed animals us. have a society. Okay. Now we mm-hmm. do we do know that our what's your favorite animal, Peter? Naked mole rat. They the also have rat, a society. Yeah. Yes. And these creatures have a society with queens, a female working class, and the males are sex slaves. Sure. So oh now boy. we're definitely on insect. I was definitely thinking lizard until you said that. Okay. So it's an insect that doesn't have the power of flight. So we're going to rule out any sort of bee, anything like that. They jump. Very good. Very good. Okay. Okay. Um, the queen spends most of their lives reproducing. But. Sure. But. When the last queen dies, a month-long war will break out where all female workers will, f- will fight until the new group of winners emerge and become the new queens. So there's a group of queens. They all die out till the very last one. And then as soon as that one dies, they split into different groups and they go to war for up to a month until they're able to name a new group of queens. I got now, it. This is, this is, is it. Go ahead. Is it 18th century England? Yep, yeah. that is our I mean, this is, a, <laughs> this is a weird insect, if it's an insect, because their group's only 100. So yep. once the queen yeah, dies, me off. if we're talking maybe there's 50 females left, it shouldn't take them a month to battle. You wouldn't think so, but it does. <laughs> okay. So once the new hmm. queens become queens, they begin a physical metamorphosis. Their okay. venom glands recede. Their ovaries grow to five times the size they were before, and their Whoa. brain chemistry changes, and their lifespan goes from six months to th- over three years. What? Mm-hmm. That is fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. So their life, just because they've essentially been elected, they can go through this change that helps them live six times longer? Yeah, yeah it's how does it biologically it, happen? It's just like human beings. As soon as you're like a celebrity <laughs> right. or you're you have yeah. a lot of money, you live longer right. and your life's better. Exactly. Um, Everybody takes care of you. Yep. Um, wow. This is fucking anything else? There's more. Oh, there's yeah, more. Let's, keep going. Let's, let's keep going. So, in addition to everything I just explained about the queen's metamorphosis, they can choose choose to shrink their own brains by up to twenty percent. Now, why would they do that? Yeah. To reserve calories to okay. extend their lives. Yep. Okay. okay. Wow. And, uh, wait, hold on. Oh, and in some instances, a group of queens can be voted out by others, thus instigating another war. So is there, is there, there's a Insane. group of queens? Uh, there's a group of queens. That's right. Interesting. Hmm. Dude. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> okay. All right. So let me recap. I've got one more, then we'll take our final guesses. So this week's Bizarre Animal of the Week is found in floodplains of tropical climates. They live in underground colonies of less than 100, and they use sticks and twigs to seal off their nest at night and reopen it in the morning when they go out to hunt. They forage for their food, but they'll also jump into their air to catch prey that it can be twice their size and up to four, t- and they can jump up to four times their height. Um, these animals have a society of queens, a female working class, and the males are nothing but sex slaves. The queens will spend all of their lives reproducing once they change. When the last queen dies, a month-long war will break out where all female workers split off into groups and battle until a group of winners emerges and becomes the new queens. Once this singular group is elected as queen, all of the queens, all of the worker females that are now queens, go under physical change. Their venom glands recede. Their ovaries grow to five times the size they were before. Their brain chemistry changes and can shrink up to 20%. 
and their lifespan goes from six months to over three years. This is crazy. Fascinating. Isn't this wild? It really so, is. The last one here, not that I think this is going to help you guys guess it, but it's still cool. Once isolated from the group, all the changes will naturally... This. Oh, sorry. I forgot to mention, in some instances, a queen can be voted out by the other members right. of the queen party. Oh, and well. once <laughs> isolated from the group, the all the changes will naturally reverse and they will morph back into a sterile, intelligent, venomous female worker. So they can go through this it's huge... Crazy huge physical change and then they can get booted for being a bitch and go straight back to where they were before Crazy. and all these physical changes can happen. This is the craziest thing I've ever heard of in my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> <laughs> See, um, I was thinking, I was along the lines of could it be some sort of flea but uh, we know a flea can jump much more than four times their height. True, true. So I'm a little lost here. Go ahead, Ratep. Well, I mean, there's only one Insect that I can think of that has queens, but the jumping thing threw me off. So I'm going, I was going to say an ant, but I'm going with like some type of cricket or grasshopper. Okay. Ah, that's, that's a, that's a good guess. Some sort of cricket or grasshopper. Praying mantis don't live in big groups. Uh, oh, they can fly. Uh, they live on the floodplains. I'm going to say that it's called, you know what? I'm going to go with this. I'm going to go with the South American floodplain beetle. Very good. Very good. Uh, That's not yeah. it. Um, <laughs> it is indeed shit. the Indian jumping ant. So these creatures live oh, in the floodplains of India. It is a type of ant, and they have just a wild and bizarre life cycle. What's it called again? Indian, Indian jumping, jumping ant. ant. Indian jumping ant, dude. It looks like Fuck. nothing. It looks like the same kind of ant that you guarantee you squished earlier today because it was crawling around your kitchen. I mean, it looks like <laughs> nothing, but it you know has yeah. a fascinating life history. You know what's interesting about this is, is the fact that some human or group of humans just observe these things long enough to, to witness all of this and log right. it. Yep. It's crazy, yeah, man. Yeah, so, somebody got their doctorate. By uh, oh, no observing question. this behavior. No question. Uh, uh, that's a good one. Let us know, Brosners, if you want us to do this segment more regularly. It I'm takes also a lot curious of work if anybody Forrest. got it. Like, there are some yeah. big nerds that follow along on the show, and I love them for it. Was anybody yeah. at, like, oh, Queen Metamorphos? Yeah, yeah, no, obviously it's uh, Harpethonus Salator, the, uh, the Indian jumping ant. <laughs> Indian jumping ant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Morons. Look at Ritap. What an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming up in a couple days, we've got Halloween. Uh, we've already done, we've talked about candy. We like to do topical mm, stuff, candy. you know, we've done. But I've got a, I've got a top three in DFL that's, that's topical that we've never done. Number one. Number two. Number three. Yeah. Dead fucking lost. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Thank I've ever you. heard that jingle before. <laughs> Dead fucking last. Thank you, so, MK, for the jingles. We love you. So this is where we go through our top three favorites of a category and the DFL, the dead fucking last, absolute worst dead in the category. Last. Yes. This week, going along the theme with All Hallows Eve, going to go out trick-or-treating. It's not all just costumes and candy, folks. There's a lot of scary movies oh, yeah. that are watched this week. Oh, yeah. So this is top three in DFL, scariest movies that we've ever seen. Love it. All right, Who's I thought first, of it. I, I'll go first since I thought okay. of it. Give you time, you guys some time to think. Top three. Number three, this is an, a new one. Uh, came out a few years ago. It's a movie called Hereditary. Did you guys ever see that? Mm -hmm. Nope, never no. seen it. That good came though, out, huh? Uh, came out in theaters. It's this uh, first-time director named Ari Aster. Uh, super creepy. The whole soundtrack is like people plucking strings of like violas and cellos and stuff. And huh. it's just unsettling. I don't want to spoil anything, but there's, I watched it in a crowded movie theater and there's a moment that happens about an hour or maybe 45 minutes into the movie that is so shocking <laughs> that I just looked around and people were just like, people didn't know what to do with their bodies. Oh. Everyone was just like, I, <laughs> What the fuck? It was huh. so goddamn tense. It's really good. Uh, number two, Hereditary. and this is tough. Number two, I'm going to go with a movie called 30 Days of Night. Mm. Oh, I've Have seen you guys 30 seen this Days one? of Night. Yeah, yeah I've, I've seen, seen that one. one that one was very scary. Legit scary. Totally holds yeah. up. It's set in Barrow, Alaska. Mm -hmm. People are leaving because it's about to be full winter where it's dark for 30 days. Yep. And a... a 
group of vampires comes into the town to feast um, because it's going to be dark and they know that these people can't get help. It's legitimately very, very scary. And the number yep. one, uh, it has the best jump scare. You know, a jump scare is the one where it makes you scream and you recoil and you, you physically jump uh-huh. or something just surprises you, right? There's like the long burn scare and then the jump scare. Best jump scare I've ever seen in a movie. It's a movie called The Descent. Uh, you I've seen The Descent. That's a cave. It's a caving movie, right? Yeah, exactly. I don't remember the jump scare. I wish you hadn't reminded me of that movie. Um, oh man, you got to, you should watch it this, this week. It's so good. It's yeah. A group of women go into a cave. They're not alone. It's really good. And then DFL, not the cartoon, not the Disney frozen, but there's a movie called frozen that came out in 2010. <laughs> Terrible. It's here's the thing. It's, it's almost worth the watch, but it got ruined. You can tell it was like an indie film. Obviously they had some funding, but the setup is so good. And then they ruined it. Here's how they ruined it. You're going to hate this for us. So the setup is the ski mountains closing down for Monday and Tuesday. On Sunday, this group of friends finagles their way onto getting the last chairlift up, right? Okay. There's like a, they finagle their way in, even though they didn't have a lift ticket. And the guy just kind of forgets that he let the, he got sweet talked by the girls into getting on. The chairlift shuts down and they're stuck on a chairlift. Okay. And it's like oh. 50 feet high. It's too high to jump. And no one's coming for three days. That's awful. That's, 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 that's terrible. terrible. Terrifying, yeah. right? Yeah. So there's this great. And so now they're trying to decide, do they jump down? Do they freeze to death? What's the best death? What do we do? It could have been this amazing psychological thriller. But then <laughs> they bring this. an evil pack of wolves into the movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> and this there pack of wolves just sits under the chairlift growling and, and snarling and waiting for them to jump down. And they become the bad guy. Right. And you're now, like, why what's is the this, point of that? Yeah. Why is this a dumb idea, Forrest? Because they wouldn't just, at no point would a pack of wolves just sit there looking up for three days. They'd be like, well, this is a waste of time. <laughs> I'm going right. to get on with life. Yeah. Oh, my Not God. Not to mention they don't really eat humans. Right. Uh, of course. You know. yeah. No. It's nonsense. So that's why that's my DFL, because what I believe, knowing what I know about entertainment, I believe that it was a great script that was turned in. And they said, you need something else. Yeah. You got to add some wolves. <laughs> yep. And they reluctantly did it. Butchered it. What was yeah. that movie? And then I, I, I can go next or Peter can, but you just reminded me of this. You were obsessed with it when we went to Vietnam, Patrick, and you passed it around to Mitch and myself. It was a World War II movie, but then they kind of mutated. Um, oh, yeah. That was really good. Uh, it was good. What the hell was it called? Um, I can find out in a second. Um, they did have like a just... grandiose title. It was like Overlord. Overlord. That's it. Oh, yeah. I remember you talking about this one. It was good. I, I liked it a lot, but uh, I did not see that coming because the movie starts and you're like, oh, okay, a World War II movie. And then you're right. like, oh, whoa, that took a hard turn. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, Nazis, like the Nazis are like doing experiments inside this base. Yeah. Uh, trying to create the ultimate soldier, and they've created these mutants, and it's it's pretty good. I watched it twice on the Vietnam flight. Yeah, I liked it. I liked <laughs> yeah. it as well. You watched it two times? Yeah, the same man. same movie? Just on repeat? Well, because Forrest didn't give me any of his snooze berries to take on that <laughs> flight, so I was up the whole time. <laughs> All right, what's All right. your list? What's your list, Peter? Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm, su- I'm surprised you didn't uh, come in with any of the classics because, um, see... When I was younger, I really, really enjoyed scary movies. Now, way too anxious. Don't like it. It's, I'm scared. <laughs> I'll be on my phone uh, trying to avoid watching sc- truly scary movies. But since uh, these older movies, they're like my favorite. They have like, and they're so ridiculous now that yeah, they're not yeah. scary anymore. So, what do you got? My first one. If you pick any of mine, I'm gonna be so annoyed because all my favorite scary movies are early 2000 movies. Well, I think it's it's even before that. He's so, going okay. back, yeah. Okay. My first one is uh, is just plain and simple Halloween. It's oh, it's okay. a great movie. It's a classic, and it's because I know what's going to happen. It's not scary, but had if I watched it for the first time, I would be terrified. During yep. It. Yep. Fair enough. Um, and then my next one is uh, the Lost Boys. Man, 
It's so fucking ridiculous and good. Never I seen that it. freaked me out when I was a kid. I watched it when I was too young to watch it for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's Vampire just about movie. a bunch of Never vampires. It. But it's like, it's got a good a good story. It's a comedy go horror movie. They, they give it a comedy when you Google it. Yeah, see what I said? I don't like to be scared. So, The Lost Boys. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, it's and movie. then, finally, just a classic, man. And, and any of them. The Nightmare on Elm Streets. They're so ridiculous that they can't be taken seriously. <laughs> nice. It's just like, when you're a little kid, though, and you find out, when you get the plot of that in your head, that yeah. Yeah, you then falling you asleep. asleep. Yep. Yeah. No uh, sleeping. Yeah, that fucked no, me up. Very scary premise as a child, for sure, but not as a... Uh, and, uh, and um, dude, my, my fucking DFL, because it's the most absurdly ridiculous fucking premise out of any movie, horror or otherwise, and they're actually making a TV show out of it, and I don't know how, uh, Child's Play. A fucking doll. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> a doll that comes I alive Chucky, and kills dude. people. Chucky was the shit. It's a tiny fucking doll. Like, yeah, I mean, he's not even that clever. I, I don't know how true. he's killing so many people. <laughs> if I saw, it's it's absurd. The, the you whole see, they're premise. bringing Dexter back as well. I think it's HBO is doing a new Dexter show. I did. No. Yeah, it's yeah. different. I like, I like Dexter. Dexter. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, Dexter is solid. All right, um, my Child's top three. Yeah, play. you you went a generation below mine, uh, Peter, which I'm happy about. So mine are, I would also consider them classics, but they're like the tackiest of scary movie classics, and I love them. Um, <laughs> Tacky so classics. Number three, the movie Scream. You guys remember oh, Scream? Yeah, yeah. Great it's great. Course. It's yeah. just, it's scary, but like not that scary, but like fun right. and ridiculous. <laughs> right. um, love Scream. New, new one coming out. New one. Oh, really? Same, That's right. A lot of the same Original. cast. Yeah. Courtney Cox, David Arquette. Did not Arquette. know that. Every t- yeah. Everything we talk about, they're just regurgitating Who? it. They're just doing it again. Even um, the main girl. Main girl's in it, too, right? Yeah, Nev Campbell. Nev Campbell. Quick, Campbell. quick aside, it's based on a true story, believe it or not. No. Oh, get out yep. of That's here. That's terrifying. Yep. I didn't know I'm not going to get into it, but just when on your own time, Google the Gainesville Ripper. It's based on a, a serial killer who was basically t- torturing and killing students in Gainesville, Florida, uh, you know, Uni- University of Florida students in the Jesus. Halloween in the the white mask face thing. No, not in the same mask, but the right, the but hysteria that it caused and a lot of the plot points are taken from that. From that By the story. way, I just googled it, and the guy's name is Danny Rowling, and he looks like a real fucking pud whacker. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. know what a pud whacker is, but I like that. <laughs> all right, um, all right number number two. number two, Final Destination. Okay. Um, okay. Because it, it I don't even horror. know if it qualifies as scary movie, but you're just the it's like going it's like going to NASCAR. You're just on the edge of your seat waiting for somebody to get smushed the whole time. And you're <laughs> yeah. like, come on, come on, oh not this time, not this time. True. And yeah. it's just such a simple premise, like easy plot, loved it, like totally wanted to see them all live, but also wanted to see them all die. Um, right. Yeah. Final Destination was great. You know, it's a good movie when they make five sequels, by the way. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, yep. And coming in at number one, hands down my favorite, favorite scary movie. Probably the first bo- pair of boobs I ever saw on TV, and that might be why. <laughs> I know what you did last summer. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. You guys Still remember that one? Of course. I don't remember boobs in it. Pretty sure there's boobs in the beginning. Like in the okay. opening, cre- I'd have to watch it again. I don't know. It's he been was a while, too busy beating off. That's right. Yeah, I missed the rest <laughs> of the movie actually. But uh, <laughs> um, and then yeah, love those three movies. Dead fucking last. I don't know why these types of movies, but this in particular has ever been made. I don't know who watches it. I don't know what's wrong with these kind of people. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre series. It's mm. like really? it's not scary. It's just blood. Gory. It's like boring. I just does nothing for me. I just like don't want to watch it. If I see that on, I'm just like this. This is no, not this. That's how I feel about the Saw movies, man. I'm just like oh, same yeah. thing. Same thing. Brutal. Same thing. Like Texas torturous. Chainsaw Saw. Hills have eyes. They're just yeah. like ugh, god. They're Hostile. so lame. Hostile. Hostile. Yeah, it's that's that whole genre House of, of a thousand gore. corpses. Ugh, it's yeah. so yeah, dull. The, the gore porn is. I don't enjoy it because no. it's like. It's it makes you squeamish, but also it's not. There's not the fun part. It's just people getting stabbed in the eyeballs. <laughs> right. <laughs> totally. Totally. Right. Nope. Doesn't do anything for me. So yeah. Okay. Top three DFL. Okay. 
like to know, would love to hear what some Brosner's favorites are. Because I'm not going to lie, I haven't seen what I would consider a good, scary movie in a long time. A lot of people were ranting about A Quiet Place. I never saw it. I probably should. It also yeah. does not qualify as a scary movie. No, it's like it a doesn't. psychological. It's more of like an action movie, I would gotcha. say, a little bit. Yeah, that's the thing. I need some Rex. Check. Rex well, watch movie. Hereditary. It's I will. good fun. And let us know. I, I love scary movies, so if any of the Brosners have them, put them in the YouTube or whatever. Because uh, I like to watch these films. Yeah. You? Retep, uh, not so much. He, won't, more he won't listen to you. Skittish. <laughs> He's like a mouse. Pa- Guys, pa- Patrick, what time is it? Did you? Yeah, did you oh. have a BR? I. Do the jingle and see what happens. I think I know what time it is. Three games today. Right in the row. For what? The battle. (laughs) Dun dun. Battle Royale. I'm so glad we have those jingles now. They're 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 a lot of fun. They're just they really are. Yeah. Uh, All right. So look, we talked about Halloween. Mm Mm-hmm. Everybody knows my stance on candy corn, about how they are the harbinger of the holidays. <laughs> Halloween comes, and then the next thing you know, you're putting out your harvest display. We're getting into the rest of the holidays. Thanksgiving is right around the corner. So here's the, here's the battle royale. Harvest display. You, you, you've got to present a meal to a panel of the Brosners. Each of us are going to present a Thanksgiving meal. Oh, there you okay? go. Okay. So you need your main protein. Two sides and a dessert. So we're going four this time, not three. A main protein, two sides, and a dessert. But here's the catch. It has to be every ingredient, all the main ingredients, have to be things that you yourself, as you, not as a superhero version of you, (laughs) could forage and capture or hunt. Oh, so God. if God. anyone does okay. an ingredient where we don't believe that they could procure that ingredient, they're immediately disqualified. So Peter, if you say you're going to make shark fin soup, it's like, we know you don't know shark how to do that. Soup. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. So it has to be and, stuff and it's, you it's could protein, get. protein, two sides and a dessert, correct? Yes. Got yes. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is it, uh, is it a snake draft? I, I missed that part. Yeah. Snake draft. One yeah. at a time. One at okay. a time. Let's let Forrest go first since he has the most hunting and foraging, not hunting, but fishing and foraging experience. Sure. sure. Yeah. All right. I will, uh, I'll take this, I'll take this one early and I'll take it right off of the table. It's Thanksgiving. We all know it. We all love it. People that say they don't love it are liars. It's just a turkey. Now, I'm not saying I'm a great hunter. I am perfectly capable of killing a neighborhood turkey, though. No questions asked. <laughs> I'm not talking about a wild turkey with the collar and then and the face paint. I'm talking about the kind that's raiding my my in-laws' trash cans every Sunday. No problem. I could take one of those out with a golf club. I, I'm I'm positive that I could catch a turkey. Roast turkey for my main. Okay. okay. So while you're roast dumpster turkey. While you're guzzling water to get Forrest's bone-dry white turkey meat no down way. your gullet, Brosners, <laughs> I will present to you an animal that I have simply whacked on the head because <laughs> they like to land in my swimming pool. I have a pair, a mating pair of ducks that ah. <laughs> lands in my pool, Delicious. shits in it frequently. They're not that scared of me. I know I could catch one just with my pool fucking strainer. So I'm going to serve a lovely... Uh, glazed duck as my protein. I, I like okay. that you're catching it from your swimming pool and that you have ducks that land in your swimming pool. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. I'm not going too far from the house here. For yeah, mine. no, smart. <laughs> All right. Well, that leaves me up for two, right? So, yes. I will, uh, <laughs> I mean, gosh, there's so many things I could go with here, but I got to go for the easiest and uh, what I could actually feasibly get. I know there's a rooster that hangs around this gas station somewhere out here in Racine. I see him walk around. <laughs> and street he's, rooster. Uh, so he's we've got cocky. dumpster turkey, pool duck, and street rooster as the main courses. He's yeah. pretty cocky, and he's Sounds got good. he's got some impeccable pecs on him. So <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna grab him. Uh, we'll have some yeah. lovely chicken. That sounds good. A little chicken. Um, and then are we doing the sides as a pair as one pick or are we going? No, no, no. One, no. we're going to do one four side? picks. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I shouldn't have even said that. Just move past it. All right. So, <laughs> yeah. um, 
My my uh, my one side is going to uh, is definitely going to be fucking yams, baby. I can pick yams. I can forage where, for yams. Where are you gonna Where are you gonna go get those? I'm gonna steal them from some farm around here. Are they grown in California? Yams. I don't yeah, know. everything's Probably. grown in California. Grown That's true. Here. That's true. In fact, yeah. you can go to yammap.com. <laughs> yammap.com. So he's gonna. Uh, I mean, look, he's gonna go onto a yam farm and dig up some yams. I, b- yep. I believe he can do it, and I believe he will do it. Yeah, I right here, Jan's yam farm. <laughs> it's right, right. He's off of googling 101. it right now. All right, I believe it. I believe it. That uh, yeah. Okay. So very good. Have, That's annoying because I was gonna pick jungle potatoes, which are yams because they're my specialty. <laughs> right. So shape You're like known one, for your I'll, jungle potatoes. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. <laughs> um, I'm gonna stick with the low hanging fruit, literally, because I have a persimmon tree in my ah. backyard. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pick some lovely persimmons. I also have an ice cream maker that I got as a gift, Christmas gift about six years ago. It's still in the box. I'm going to make a just refreshing, light persimmon ice cream as my Lovely. dessert. And where I still haven't get, left my... Where do you get the, uh, the No, the cream? main... In, come on, the main ingredient. Yeah, what? come on, come on. What? No, the entire What are you kicking, cooking dish. your street rooster with? Just water? Just boiled no, street yeah. rooster? Catch it. What? No, you're that, gonna that harvest is olive oil, dumbass. Cream. You have to cultivate cream no, from it's, the it's wild. The, it's the main it's ingredient. The main, yeah, come yeah. on. Okay, well that on. changes everything. Uh, all right, that's fine. fine. Forest that's is up you, for two here. Um, that's nice, by the way, because I also have a persimmon tree, and I don't really like persimmons, so I'd like to figure out a good use for them. I do like the flavor. Ooh. I don't like the texture. So, right. persimmon ice cream. That's a good ice cream. A good thought. Yeah. Let's make some okay. next time we hang out. Let's. I'll bring. I'll bring the maker to the studio. We'll set it up. Yeah. Some of the peppercorns. All in right, there. so I've got I've got my dumpster turkey as my main course. Um, <laughs> I am going to pair that with things that I know I can get. One is not as easy to get as Patrick's persimmons, but um, is wild chanterelles. We've just yeah. had an amazing rain in California. I love wild mushrooms. Chanterelles go nicely with white meat, so it's going to be a nice side, like, like a nice gravy chanterelle gravy Ooh. to put on the turkey. Mm. Um, now yeah. we need something so we've got something hearty we've got a hearty gravy jungle potatoes were taken from me by a guy who's raiding a farm so I am going to uh, I'm going to have I need something green and, and refreshing so I'm going to do a nice miner's lettuce salad so this time of year it grows everywhere including in all of our neighborhoods miner's lettuce it's that round leaf it's actually very okay. very tasty uh, you can pick it anywhere I'm going to do a nice miner's lettuce salad um, to go with my turkey and chanterelle gravy. Okay, yeah. that's a good start. Um, hopefully you're going to have a good dessert, because I don't think you've you've won yet. I haven't wowed anybody, yeah. No, no, I mean, look, the, the chanterelles are going to be nice. Um, yeah. Okay, so I've got my duck. I already know my dessert, so I'm gonna, you're going to have a beautiful glazed duck. Mm-hmm. To go along with that, because duck is fatty, right? And it's kind of heavy, and the glaze so is good. sweet. It's a heavy, so heavy good. thing. So I'm not going to go with the traditional heavy side. I want you to have a, a really refreshing, lovely salad made from dandelion greens. Uh, it's very trendy. When you go to a fancy restaurant, mm-hmm. they will serve dandelion greens as like a elevated salad. Uh, I happen to know that there's a park right by me with lots of dandelions. <laughs> Ugh. Easy. You get from I, a park in L.A.? I'll wash them. I'm going to make yeah. you a nice dandelion green salad. Sounds very nice. Yeah, thank you. Kay. Peter, what do you want to add to your... Five? Two. Five, yep. <laughs> You're up for five picks. <laughs> okay, well, you know, <clears throat> mushrooms know. sound good, so knowing that Forrest will be foraging for them, I will follow him into <laughs> the mushroom territory and find some other type of mushrooms, maybe morels. I know those are difficult to find. Good. But since I'm tracking and following and subsequently killing Forrest, he'll be out mm. of the competition anyways. Smart. Okay. In fact, I'll just steal his mushrooms. And okay, I so make, morels? Sure, I will morels. make a delicious cream of mushroom soup. <laughs> Sounds great. Sounds yep. delicious. <laughs> yeah. Okay. With, so, with blood on your hands, sir. <laughs> so we have chicken, yams, and cream of mushroom soup. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. yeah. And then I'd for my dessert... This is my final. They don't go together well, yams and cream of mushroom. No. You don't know that. That's really not a match made in heaven. 
You don't nope. know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> so my final, my, my dessert will be, uh, since I have both a lemon and an orange tree in my new backyard, I will have delicious lemons to, with which to make a lemon meringue pie for dessert with a splash of uh, either tangerine or orange. I'm not sure what it is yet, but it's one of those fruits. Okay, so a, a zesty, fruity pie. Yeah, a little bit of the zest will go in there as well. That's That'll be point. nice after the cream of mushroom. C- citrus um, pie, okay. Yeah, citrus pie. Got uh, it. Look, Very nice. glazed, glazed duck. Uh, you've got the, the nice, refreshing salad. So I'm going to go something a little heartier. I want it to match the sweetness of the glazed duck. So I am going to make a dish that I actually make very well, glazed carrots. Now, do I know exactly where I'm going to find the carrots? No, but I will (laughs) tell you that 90% of all domestic carrots are grown in California. So I'll just Google it. I'll find an area where carrots grow. I know they grow (laughs) in the ground. I can easily dig them out. And it's going to be a balsamic reduction on my glazed carrots. Okay. Very good. Very good. Uh, well, I have a uh, delightful roast dumpster turkey, some heavy chanterelle <laughs> gravy, a nice miner's lettuce salad, and to accompany my meal to round it out. Actually, and I'm not just saying this, my favorite dessert, which is just fresh wild berries. Now, this time of year, it's blackberries. I'd love to mix it with some blueberries because I think they go together very well. But if not, just fresh blackberries, a little bit of whipped cream with some sugar in the cream. Yeah. That's it. Just fresh. Can my, I, it's literally my can favorite I huff dessert. Can I your whipped cream bottle when you're done with sure. it? Sure. You can have the empty bottle to just huff the air out like a lunatic. That's great. That's, that's fine. Perfect. Um, I like that. I like that battle royale because I had to think about stuff that I could find. What's where wrong to get with it. cream and mushroom, by the way? I just don't know that it goes well with the sweetness of the yams. Bit or, odd. The, or the lemon pie. No, the lemon pie is the dessert. It? Le- lemon meringue <laughs> yeah. pie. What are you talking about? No, I know. It sounds delicious. Dude, uh, all I'd eat the any of these meals for Thanksgiving are made with cream of mushroom soup. I, I would eat mushroom roast dumpster bean. turkey. I would eat glazed pool duck. I would eat uh, yeah, roast cool street duck. rooster. No question. <laughs> I would have any of these. They sound They, sound they do delicious. sound good. Yeah. Let us know who you think won. We take a lot of pride in finding just one person that says I won. Uh, that yes. makes me feel good. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Let us know. Run it That's down it? for us. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, no, we got it, right? Did I go through it? No, I didn't. Okay. So, yeah, give us a vote. Uh, is it my meal of roasted turkey with chanterelle gravy, miner's lettuce salad, and delicious fresh berries and cream? Is it Patrick's glazed swimming pool duck, his fresh persimmon ice cream at the end? I should have done that in the wrong order. His den. <laughs> <laughs> His dandelion green salad and glazed carrots to accompany said duck? Or is it Peter's lovely LA street rooster with some <laughs> fresh yams, some cream of mushroom soup, and a, and a delicious citrus pie at the end? Lemon meringue pie. Citrus, citrus pie. pie. You just Wait, said it's fruit it's pie when you explained I did it. Not. I said lemon, you did. lemon yeah. meringue. I'm picturing a hostess fruit pie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Still delicious. Yeah, oh. Well, guys, <sighs> it's been thing. fun. Uh, hey, if you're listening to the podcast, go check it out on YouTube where the video is there too. You can mm-hmm. find that and all the other links to listen to the podcast, buy the merch, check out the Patreon. All of those links are at the wildtimespodcast.com forward slash info. If you want to go directly to the Patreon to support us, there is a link in the video in the description, and that link is patreon.com forward slash wildtimespod. At Wild Times Pod for all the socials is where we are found. Pat, I know you like to talk about how much fun shit there is on the Patreon. What are they going to get there? Well, we're dropping a new bonus vid this week uh, for extra video podcasts a month where we show videos that we can't show because we'll get taken off YouTube. uh, Where our digital nude calendar is, right? That's where our digital nude calendar calendar is. Yep. Yeah, Uh, that's important. A lot of BTS stuff gets dropped on there that we can't really talk about in public, but just with our our tight-knit group of bros, we can do it. All sorts of shit. Good night, everybody. Love you guys. Love you. Oh, my God. What the fuck? Do the thing. I'm dancing. There's no me. There it is. Or I'll slip into my hands. Mm. I'm a one-trick pony. That's a nice. No-trick pony. That is nice. You're a street rooster. <laughs>